In this video, we're going to go over the most commonly used features of the ICU bedside monitor. For more videos like this, please give it a thumbs up, post a comment, and hit the bell for notifications. Let's get started. Here's an example of the bedside monitor. On the top mid region, you see your patient's cardiac rhythm. To the right of that, you see the number 73, which indicates the patient's heart rate. If your patient has an arterial line, you will see this waveform. To the right of it is the arterial pressure. Here you see PA, which means pulmonary artery pressure, but we don't have a swan gans inserted on this patient, which is why you do not see a pressure. Below that is the blue line, which is the respiratory waveform, and to the right of that, you see the oxygen saturation. Below that, you can see your patient's blood pressure, and finally, below that, you can see your patient's respiratory rate. First, connect your patient to the cardiac monitor, pulse ox, and blood pressure cuff. You will instantly see your patient's rhythm, heart rate, and pulse ox. Then, you need to go to blood pressure and select the frequency that you want the blood pressure to be taken at. The default is one hour. Make sure you select start cycling. Then, do one more step and make sure you see the countdown to the next blood pressure. If you do not see the countdown, the blood pressure will not take until you manually push the start cycling button again. This can be a huge problem if you get busy with another patient and don't notice. Then hours go by and later you realize that you don't have vital signs for the last few hours. Don't ask me how I know this. Next, you can also change the systolic, diastolic, and MAP alarms. If you click on ECG, you can change the upper and lower limits of the heart rate. For example, if you have a surgical patient and you don't want to wait till the heart rate is 130, you can lower the alarm notification. This way you can easily notify the advanced practice provider. Trends will show you a linear view of the most recent vital signs, so you can potentially see when changes occurred. At any time, you can print the waveforms, which can be handy when you need to show your advanced practice provider who may be on the go. To view fast rhythms easier, you can click on Freeze Waveform. Relearn QRS is great to have the monitor reanalyze your patient's rhythm. Sometimes the reading could be inaccurate. If you think it might be, change the leads and then have the machine relearn the QRS. You are able to change which lead you want to view. The default is lead two. Under advanced, you can select pacemaker detection if your patient has a pacemaker. You can have your other patient's data show up on the screen by going to data and pages, then selecting your patient. Only the room number will show. When traveling with a patient, you can go to data and pages, then standby. If there's a patient on the monitor, these options will be highlighted. You select where you're going and then remove the patient data module from the display monitor. You attach it to the travel display monitor and simply return it when you get back. To add additional functions, plug in a pressure cable and look for the new box to appear. Then select which kind of pressure it is, arterial line, CVP, or central venous pressure, or PA, pulmonary pressure, are the most common ones that we use. To zero all pressures, first turn the stop clock in the upright position, then push zero, when you see zeroed, place the stop clock in the original position. All right, hope you enjoyed that video. If you wanna see more videos like this, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell for notifications.